Eureka! Oh hey, it's Mr. Doro. Today I'm going to be talking about some equipment that we're going, to, we're going to use in chemistry this year. One of them is the balance, the graduated cylinder, the burner, and the centimeter ruler. Stay tuned. The first piece of equipment we're going to deal with is the four beam balance. This is what we'll be using pretty much every time that we're in lab. Some things that you need to know about this is there are four beams and you always start with the hundreds right back here and there are little notches that these fall into and you should be able to see through the little window you should see the number you never want to leave this in between where you can't see a number whatsoever uh, you want to make sure it's zeroed out first of all that means that right over here this is on the zero when there's nothing on the balance there is a little slide thing right here in front that a lot of people don't know about and so you gotta put make sure that's over to zero too so this is zeroed out and so we're ready to go the only things that can go on this pan, you can never put chemicals on this pan or anything else except for this weigh, a weighing dish like this and, or a tear, and you'll have to find the mass of this so that you can subtract it from whatever you're trying to find the mass of, or you can put a beaker on there. But I'd never want you to put a graduated cylinder on there because they're a little too tall and they can tip over very easily. So the first thing we want to do, if I wanted to find the mass of this golf ball, I would put my tear on here and I would find the mass of that, which I'm going to do right now. So to find the mass of the tear, what we do is we start always with the biggest bar right there. That went down too far over here, so we got to go back to zero. Then I move this over to 10. That again went down too far. I move this now into the notches every time. That's not far enough. That's not far enough. When I go to the three, that's too far. As you can see, that it's down below there. So I go back to the two put it in that notch and then I slide this one over until I get it to zero out and that's pretty good now we're gonna read this I'm gonna pick it up so that we can read it together okay so the way we read this is this is two grams right here and this is point three so that's two point three and then it is 2.31, it's between the 2.31 and the 2.32. Now we really could read this to three places after the decimal, but we're only going to do it to two. And so I would call this either 2.31 or 2.32, but I'm going to call it 2.32 grams. Now I can put the golf ball on there, and I am going to write down on my sheet right here, and we always go to two places after the decimal, so I've written down what the tear mass is, 2.32 grams. Now I put my golf ball on here, and then I start moving it. I can move these back to zero, and 100 is too far, and 50 is too far, so it's 40-something. And I keep moving this until and it's 49 is too far, so it's 48-something. And I go back here, and that's pretty good right there, so let me pick that up so we can read it together. Okay, so we have the 40 right here, and then we have 8 more right there. So it's 48.2, it's between the 0.2 and the 0.3, and it's just past the 0.25. So 48.25 is my total mass. So I got, wrote that down here, 48.25 grams. And so this is the way you should record it each time, tear, the tear plus your mass. And then to find out the mass of just the golf ball, we have to subtract these two. And when we do that, we get 45.93 grams total for the golf ball. And then we put that right around there. This is the work that you need to show each time when you're going through these. That's how you use the balance. And you make sure that you're always, when you get done, you put everything back to zero. So you slide these over, back to zero, so that's all set for the next person. This is a graduated cylinder. This is used in the chemistry lab to measure liquid volume anytime we want to get an accurate measurement. Now the correct way to read a graduated cylinder is you don't hold it up like this and look at it because you could be tilting it the whole time. So you're going to set it on the counter and then you're going to get down at eye level and you're looking for the bottom of the meniscus. There's, there'll be a little dip and that's what you're looking at. You read from the bottom of that each time.
So I have some water in this graduated cylinder, and we're going to read the volume of it. If you'll notice on this side of the graduated cylinder, it starts at the top going to zero down to 20. And on this side over here, it starts at the top going 25 down to, well, 5 or 0 right there. This is the side we're going to read when we're measuring the volume. The other side is when we are pouring out of it, you want to see how much you pour it out. So we're going to get down at eye level. And so I'm going to get this right down to eye level right here. And we're going to measure this. Now, this says it is, this is the 10 spot right here. Here's the 10. Here's the 15. And so each one of these, this one would be the 11, the second one right there, the longer one, and then 12, 13, and then 14, and then the, up at the 15 right there. So each of these go by half. This would be 10 and a half, and then 11. So we can see that this is 11, 12, 13. It's between the 13 and the 14 when we go at the bottom of the meniscus. And so between the 13 and here's the 14 right there, but we know that it's at least, it's better than 13 and a half. There's 13 and a half. And really the last number that we have, we can estimate. So it's got to be somewhere between 13 and a half and 14. So 13 point, between 13.5 and 14. And so I would say that's a little less than halfway between those two, there, two right there. So halfway between would be 13.75. So I'm going to call this 13 point seven on there and that we would call this 13.7 milliliters going from the bottom of the meniscus there this is a burner and this is a turl burner and we'll be using this quite often in class and I'm going to show you how to use this how to light it and how we take care of it in class first of all you have to hook the hose up to the gas valve this has a couple of adjustments on it there's an adjustment right here on the bottom which is just how much gas is allowed in there and the flame will get higher or lower depending on which way you turn it. And this is the air vent adjustment and that adjusts the, the way the flame is and there's a certain way that we're going to want it each time. When you're ready to light this on the sink there should be a flint that will, a sparker that we can use to light this. Sometimes you've got to push down a little bit on it to give it a little pressure to make it spark, but that's what you're going to want each time. You want to let everybody know at your table that you're going to light the burner so that they know that the burner is going to be um, in use and, and they don't get burned on it. This you don't want at the edge of the table. You want to probably have it somewhere where the cord is not, or the gas line is not all um, knotted up and you're going to get it started. In order to get it started, then we are going to, this is the gas right here, you have to push down and turn the gas on. You have to let everybody know I'm going to light the burner. And then you just put this over it, not extinguishing, not putting it right over the top of it, but just like this in order to light that burner. Now sometimes that flame is tough to see. In fact, it's very tough to see right now. So I'm going to turn off the light so that you can get a look at it. Now that's the reason why you have to tell everybody that you're getting ready to light the flame because they might not even be able to see it. And if they reach across it, then they could be in trouble. They could burn their arms or catch their sleeves on fire. Now you always want to make sure that you always have the burner attended also, that you never leave a burner alone like it is right now. But then you want to adjust it so that we get what we call a chemistry flame. I'm going to turn the, the air vent right here and I'm going to crank it until I see that triangle, that blue triangle right there. That blue triangle, this is called a chemistry flame and this is how we want it each time. Now if I adjust the bottom part, then that adjusts how much gas I'm allowing through there and it can get higher or lower. And so you just gotta, you have to be comfortable with your adjusting on there, but you have to get a nice chemistry flame. Right at the tip of that blue triangle, that is the hottest part of the flame and that's the part that we're gonna use most of the time in chemistry. In order to turn this off, I'll show you after I turn the lights on. So in order to turn this off, all we have to do is cut off our gas supply. So we turn that off and it's gone again. Remember, everybody's going to have to light the flame at some time. So what you want to do is let everybody know. Don't get jumpy about it. Turn the gas on and then just light the flame. That's all there is to it. 
Last thing I want to show you is the centimeter ruler. Now this ruler has both inches on this side right here. That is 12 inches. That's one foot. But in chemistry class, we're going to use the centimeter side. And so if you take a look at this, it says centimeters. And each one of these, this is um, 30 centimeters across here. And there it is at the end. A little over 30, 30 and a half centimeters. But when we use this, we always need to make sure that we start at this line right here not at the very end of the ruler. And each one of these little divisions is 0.1 centimeters. So we are to measure this box right here. We would start right at the line on the end down there. So I'm trying to turn this so that you can see that I'm on that line. Okay, and it's very hard to get this in location. There we go. We're going to start right at that end, and then we'll go all the way down here to see how far that is. And we'll get a measurement on that. And so that is, we want to go two places after the decimal. It's 21.5. You can see it ends at that 21.5, and it's right on that 21.5 line. And so we, that is called 21.50. We're going to make sure that we put each time. And so the last number that we have in there is really an estimate. We can get the actual, let's, let's measure it this way. And see, we'll start it right on the edge, right there. And we'll go across here. And this one is right on the 12, exactly. So this is 12.00. We want to go two places after the decimal each time. And then we can do one more measurement. And that one more measurement for this Kleenex box would be right there. And that is right on the 5. The Kleenex box maker did a nice job on this. So that would be 5.00. But what if it was right here? If it were right there, then we would call that 5. Point in the 0.5 is halfway in between the 5 and the 6. So that's 5 point, it looks like to me it's right on the 5.7. So we would call that 5.70. That last number is estimated. We weren't sure that it was right on there, but that's what we're calling it. Now you've got a good idea how to use all this equipment in chemistry. That's going to help you out so much. You're getting a great start. You did a good job by watching the video. And I hope you have a great day. See you later.